You want to know the top pros and cons of living in Boca Raton, Florida, everything that you would possibly need to know in this video. 20 years ago, I moved from New York to Boca Raton, Florida. I was a Boca Raton resident. I have a lot to say about this topic. Stay tuned. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe McFarlane. If you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button below. Don't forget to ring the bell so you can be first to be notified on whenever I drop brand new content. So let's talk about it. Pros and cons of living in Boca Raton, Florida. There's a lot of things that I can say about South Florida as a whole, but there's something, there are several things that set Boca Raton apart exclusively from the rest of South Florida. The first thing I wanna talk about is one of the most obvious things, and that's going to be quality of life or lifestyle. A lot of people, when they come down to visit South Florida, they will immediately recognize that it looks and feels a lot different. It feels a lot more affluent, more wealthy. As soon as you get off the exit at I-95 and Palmetto Park Boulevard, and you take a look around on either side of the traffic light, you're probably gonna see a couple of Ferraris, Maseratis, Rolls Royces, and Bentleys. This is a fact, it's not an exaggeration. And the truth is, Boca Raton is is one of the most affluent cities in all of South Florida. It's also one of the most affluent cities in the entire country. And so if you like to live somewhere and you enjoy the finer things in life, then Boca Raton most certainly will be a place for you. And it's not just about fancy cars. Boca has some of the most expensive neighborhoods, real estate, commercial real estate, businesses, income gaps, exclusive country clubs, exclusive dining, and expensive shopping as well. Now, whether that's a pro or a con is completely subjective enough to you. But I do know that a lot of people like to live in Boca Raton because they love that lifestyle. Whereas other people will completely frown upon it because it's either completely out of their budget or they just don't care and that's okay too but you're going to find that most people will say that Boca Raton is very ritzy and overall a very very nice place to live now on the con side and sadly and unfortunately along with affluence and wealth comes douchebaggery <laughs> Yes, I said it, douchebags. Boca Raton does have a lot of douchebags. Arrogance, pretentiousness, mean people, things like that. Now, to be fair, I don't think that the douchebaggery and pretentiousness has anything to do with wealth, because you and I both know that whether somebody has money or doesn't have money, they can both still be douchebags. But for some reason, it seems to follow suit in places like Boca Raton. If you don't like those types of people, then Boca Raton might not be for you. I, for one, love Boca Raton, and I don't like or hang out with those types of people. So pick your friends wisely. The next thing that I wanna mention about the people who live in Boca Raton is you're gonna notice that there's a lot of folks who are not from Florida. Yeah, most people who live in Boca Raton are transplants from somewhere else. In fact, I would go so far as to say is that most of them are originally from New York. Now, in case my accent hasn't given it away yet, I am originally from Long Island, New York, and I moved to South Florida approximately 20 years ago. So I am a New Yorker, an official transplant, if you will. And fellow New Yorkers, I have to tell you something. There's something that they say about us New Yorkers behind our backs when we're not listening. You ready? They don't like us. They don't like they us. Don't like us. No, I'm just kidding. They like us, of course they like us, but there are things about us that they don't like. Floridians in general don't like that New Yorkers can be very pushy, very loud, boisterous, maybe at times a bit rude. And I'm not going to deny some of those accusations because I have actually seen a lot of that in my life, living in South Florida for the last 20 years and also being a former New Yorker. But what I will say is this, I do think it's interesting and important that a lot of New Yorkers do live in Boca Raton. And I also think it's an interesting fact that a lot of the establishments like the service industry, for example, hotels and restaurants have super high standards for service. And when you visit one of these establishments, you are usually really, really well taken care of. And that has a lot to do with the high standards and the quality of service that New Yorkers in particular require if they're gonna show patronage to that particular establishment. Recently, I visited Las Vegas, which is home to some of the best restaurants in the world. My wife and I had the privilege of dining at some of these wonderful restaurants. And to my disappointment, we did not get very good service. And I was shocked, and it wasn't just one restaurant. We went to five different restaurants, all of them. The food was wonderful, but the service was lackluster. And I said to my wife while we were driving back from each of these restaurants, you know, we would have gotten better service in Boca, which reminds me, a lot of people who live in Boca are locals to Boca, so they're the reoccurring clients that come to those same restaurants and establishment. So it might be more accurate to say that the restaurants take care of these people on a regular basis. Whereas in Vegas, everyone's a tourist. They're here today, gone tomorrow. And so maybe they don't pour on the service as well. But at the end of the day, the huge influx of New Yorkers in Boca Raton, Florida is going to contribute to two things higher service standards, and some jerks in traffic when you see them on the road. New York friends, try to be nicer. 
All right, so the next point that I wanted to make about life in Boca Raton, Florida, both pros and cons, is going to be the dating pool. And it's interesting because the dating pool actually hinges off the last two topics that we spoke about, affluence and pretentiousness, as well as a transient city mixed with some New Yorkers who are known for having high standards and at times being douchebags. <laughs> It doesn't get much easier than this. From the tip of Palm Beach County to the bottom of Miami-Dade County, there's approximately six million people living in South Florida. It's huge in both population and in surface area. And because we're such a big tourist destination, there's so many people coming and going and visiting and leaving and moving and moving away at all times. And so somebody can conclude that the dating pool is actually very big, very available, very plentiful, However, you have to be very careful because within that dating pool, or any dating pool for that matter, there could be a lot of jerks. Now I must specify, I am happily married and have been so for about seven years now, but I do have a lot of single friends. And whenever I talk to them about what it's like to be single and what the dating pool is like, and if there's any prospects that they're considering, they usually give me the same feedback, that finding somebody to go on a date with is not hard or finding somebody who is attractive to go on a date with is the easy part, but actually settling down with somebody who you think might be a great match for you as a lifetime partner is extremely difficult. And while this channel is not dedicated to dating advice, I am gonna leave you with this piece of dating advice. I would highly recommend that if you are single and you are looking to date somebody, you must go to your local church and find somebody who not only will be a great match for you, but most importantly, they will know the first thing about you. For more dating tips, make sure you click like and subscribe below. The next point that I wanted to make is that Boca Raton sets itself apart in the category of the public school system. Now, I want to be very clear. I am not a fan of, nor do I support the public school system at all. In fact, I take a very hard stance against it. And for more information about that, check out some of my other videos, which I create around this topic. And I'll be creating more videos about that in the near future. My wife and I choose to homeschool our children. We believe it's the absolute best path. But the public school system, although South Florida has been identified as a haven for people who are leaving other states that have failed public school systems, they come to Florida expecting something different. And I'm here to tell you that it's not much different. It's pretty much the same. And so if your intention is to move to South Florida from a state that has failed policies and your expectation is to come here because South Florida has better political policies, you are correct. But you're not going to find that in the public school system. What you will find in Boca Raton is a A-rated, A-plus public school system per their public school system standards. And so two things. One, if you do not object to the public school system, and if you are a fan of the public school system, then this would be a good option for you. Number two, most people will ask, where are the A-rated school zones? Because they know that the properties that are located within those school zones are most likely going to be the properties that will appreciate the most over time, which is also a statistical fact. So if you are specifically looking for a house to purchase, to live in, to own within an A-rated school system. And whether it's to send your children there or if it's simply because you're looking for a house because you want better appreciative value over time, then Boca Raton is absolutely that place because all of Boca Raton is within an A plus district per the standards set forth by the district. By my standards, it's an F. That's another video. Okay, so another interesting topic that people usually ask about and want to talk about is the cost of living. What is the cost of living like in Boca Raton? Well, I can tell you this. It ain't cheap. Nope. In fact, it's very expensive. If you're going to live in one of the most affluent, most wealthy cities in the country, then you can expect things to be more expensive. However, when you compare Boca Raton, cost of living, home prices, as well as property taxes to a similar suburb in Long Island, New York, or even maybe places within the city, then you are going to find that Boca Raton is in fact less expensive than a similar suburb of Long Island, New York. Call it Dix Hills, call it East Hampton. At the end of the day, you will be paying less in taxes and most likely have a lower cost of living moving south to Florida, which is one of the many reasons why South Florida continues to boom and is expected to boom in the years to come. So why else do you think people continue to come down to sunny South Florida? I'll give you a hint. I just said it. The nickname is Sunny South Florida. The weather is absolutely awesome. We have the best weather in the country. Better than San Diego. You want to know why? I think you know why. Because nobody's leaving Florida to go back to California. It's the other way around. And that's the only reason that you need. But at the end of the day, our weather is absolutely gorgeous. December, January, February, the winter months, 
75 degrees out. And from time to time, the temperature will drop just below 55 degrees in the evening. And on that two or three nights throughout the entire winter, a Floridian might go ahead and turn the thermostat up and put the heat on a little bit for the first time in forever. But for the most part, year round, the temperature is approximately 80 degrees. And because no matter where you live in Boca Raton, you are always within eight miles from the beach or a 10 minute drive, you can rest assured know that almost at any time, you can up and walk and just make it a beach day. And not just any beach day, because Boca Raton's beaches are much nicer than Jones Beach. You know what Jones Beach looks like? Well, it's a lot nicer. We have beautiful white sand, electric blue water, gorgeous palm trees, a bunch of fit people running around, exercising, walking around, playing sports, beautiful live music projecting out into the ocean wind, and a delicious cool beverage in my hand. Sheesh, let me get out of here. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna do that tomorrow. But the weather is absolutely phenomenal. Now, I will say that in the summertime, the weather gets a bit brutal. So to go from phenomenal to brutal is a pretty big shift. Well, what is brutal? We're talking about 90 degrees, tons of humidity. The second that you go outside, you're already sweating. Ladies, your hair goes poof. And if you're me, you will say that this is a small inconvenience to live in paradise and go to the beach at Christmas time. And so approximately nine months out of the year, we have gorgeous weather. And in those three summer months, it gets pretty hot and uncomfortable and there's nothing we can do about it. One more thing, September, October, November, historically hurricane season. So we do get some massive storms, some nasty ones, but South Floridians are prepared for those storms. And we've done a great job both protecting from and recovering from whenever these storms do come through. So don't let that deter you from coming down and enjoying the fun in the sun. Another cool thing about Boca Raton, Florida is that it's proximity to everything. You are literally smack in the middle of South Florida with Palm Beach County to your north and Broward County and Miami-Dade County to your south, the Everglades to the west and the ocean to the east. And on the other side of the ocean is the Bahamas. You're surrounded by multiple cool cities with tons of fun things to do. Think about it, within Boca itself, there's lots to do. But if you wanted to venture outside, here's your travel path, 10 minutes north, Delray Beach, restaurants, boutiques, bars, nightclubs, 30 minutes north, West Palm Beach, same thing. 45 minutes north, the world famous, beautiful, probably my favorite place, Jupiter. If you wanna travel three hours north, you have Disney World. If you wanna go three and a half hours northwest, you have Bush Gardens. About an hour and a half west, straight shot across Alligator Alley, you have Naples. Fun little place to get away for a little staycation. If you wanna visit the Everglades, they're right there. If you wanna go south, what is it? Pompano Beach, lots of fun. Fort Lauderdale Beach, lots of fun. Miami Beach, even more fun. And don't forget, we also have the world famous hard rock guitar shaped casino, 20 minutes south from Boca Raton. I haven't even begun to start talking about the international flights that you can go places to. In fact, I spend less money and half the amount of time traveling to the Caribbean, the Virgin Islands, and Latin America than I do traveling back to New York to visit the family. And so living in South Florida and or Boca Raton, Florida makes travel super convenient. You have the choice of three different international airports. You can go 20 minutes north to West Palm Beach International Airport. You can go south about 20 minutes to the Fort Lauderdale International Airport, or even further south to Miami International Airport, approximately 35 to 40 minutes away also. There's two major cruise terminals near Boca Raton, Florida. One is in Fort Lauderdale and the other one is out of the Port of Miami. So whether you're flying or cruising or driving, you are close to everything. It's a major travel hub, and in many cases, you can get nonstop flights to other major cities in the country, and that's pretty awesome. Speaking of travel, another really cool thing about Boca Raton is the city's diversity. It is very culturally diverse, no exaggeration. If you go to Boca Town Center Mall and you just walk right through the middle of it, you're going to hear several languages being spoke within a matter of minutes. You'll hear English, Spanish, Portuguese, Hebrew, Russian, the list goes on. All of South Florida as a whole is culturally diverse, but Boca Raton specifically adds a lot of flavor to the mix. And I think that most people find the diversity to be very interesting and at times really fun. Typically when I meet new people, I like to ask where they're from, what their ethnic background is, and have conversations about what it was like growing up in that particular country, or maybe even practice some of their language. Well, you can absolutely expect that hanging out in a place like Boca Raton. Be diversified. Here's something that people see and talk about, but they don't talk about it on YouTube that much. When you visit Boca Raton, you're going to notice a lot of gated communities. Yes, elsewhere in the country, you don't see many of these. Yet in Boca, tons of gated communities. You're going to drive by and you're gonna notice that these communities, these places, these residential neighborhoods have a gatehouse 
with a electric bar that goes up and down. And in many cases, they have a guard or some type of armed guard at the gate. This is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. They pay extra money to have this extra layer of security in Boca Raton. Why? Why not? People want to pay a little bit more money to feel a little bit more safe and feel and look a little bit more exclusive. So you will see lots of HOAs and gated communities in Boca. You're also going to see what is called zero lot lines in Boca Raton. Now, if you're not from South Florida, you live in the Midwest, or maybe you live in the boondocks in upstate New York, like where my parents live, you're probably going to be a little disappointed to know that your property line butts up right next to your neighbor's property line. So literally, you're going to look out your window, and you'll probably see them right over there, like within a matter of feet. And that's just how the builders did it. So when they acquired the land, they went ahead and they subdivided it to squeeze as many houses on it as possible, not to make it uncomfortable, but to make it just comfortable enough so that you wouldn't complain about it. And that is the norm here in South Florida. So if you're like my dad, who really likes his space and doesn't want to see any of his neighbors from very far away, but you're also considering a single family home purchase in South Florida, it's extremely likely that your neighbor's property line is going to be a stone's throw away. And so that's something that you should realize about living in Boca Raton, Florida. Guard gates, gatehouses, zero lot lines. Now on a positive note, these communities usually are very well maintained. As soon as you pull into that guard gate, you look up, you see these beautiful palm trees. Everything is landscaped, beautifully manicured, well kept. It's a great impression when you arrive, or maybe when your guests arrive from out of town. They fly in from New York, they get off the plane, they take an Uber into your gated community, and they say, wow, this is a nice place. Looks like Beverly Hills. People actually really say that. So that's kind of the feeling that you get when you arrive into these really beautiful affluent communities. So that's a plus. Another thing that you should know is that a lot of communities in Boca Raton are country clubs, which are not to be confused with gated communities. Of the gated communities, pretty much all of them belong to an HOA, Homeowners Association. Not all of them belong to a country club. That is something completely different. If you belong to a country club, or if you're interested in belonging to a country club, it is going to come with a country club fee. In many cases, these country club fees look something like this. A one-time $100,000 country club membership fee for your membership, plus a substantial monthly or annual fee just to maintain the amenities and your club status at this particular country club. To which you ask, who would want to do that? To which I always answer, somebody who really loves to play golf, who has plenty of money and it's within their budget, not a big deal, and somebody who really enjoys rubbing elbows with some of Boca Raton's elite because it could bless their business in terms of networking and partnerships, which by the way, I am all about. And so country clubs for some people are extremely desirable. And if that person is you, I'd love to be able to help you. And if that person is not you, I'd love to be able to help you in securing and finding your next South Florida dream home. All right, we're coming up on the very last pro and con. Before I tell you what it is, please go ahead if you haven't already, take this opportunity right now to click the subscribe button below. Don't forget to ring the bell. You'll be first to be notified whenever I drop brand new videos just like this one. Are you guys ready? Save the best for last, here we go. Boca Raton is extremely pet friendly. For the most part, I'll explain. When you hang out in Boca, if you're at a restaurant, if you're at the mall, if you're at the bookstore, it is very common to see people bring their pets with them. Sometimes a little teacup Yorkie will be in a lady's purse. Other times a little Pomeranian will be pushed in a stroller. Other times somebody's Rottweiler is going to be walked on a leash through the mall. <laughs> yes, that's totally true. And so South Florida is extremely friendly to pets. I never saw this type of stuff when I lived up in New York. Maybe because New York, the weather is a lot different and it's a hassle to bring your pet out of the house. I don't know. But the point is that you will see more family pets in family places in the general public than anywhere else in South Florida and especially in Boca Raton, Florida. But there's a catch. Since Boca Raton is also known for being extremely exclusive, they also have a very strict policy on some breeds. Now, I wanna be very careful. Please listen to what I'm saying here. You are allowed to own any breed in Boca Raton, Florida. You're clear, you're good. But many HOAs will discriminate against what they call aggressive breeds in that community. So before you move to Florida, or before you consider a purchase in Florida. It's extremely important that you find out that if that community is in an HOA, and if it is in an HOA, does the HOA allow pit bulls, Dobermans, or Rottweilers? I have seen many families with those types of breed dogs from up north who are considering about moving to South Florida, not be able to secure the property of their choice because 
of the restriction or limitation to the type of breed of dog that they had. Now, I already know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, but Joe, my dog is an ESA, emotional support animal, and that's the law and they can't tell me that. To which I say, you are correct. That is true, you are right. However, there are other variables in the equation which could result in you not getting your HOA approval or you not getting your offer accepted by either the listing agent or the seller of the property simply because they are reluctant about your offer because of the breed dog that you own, which you would have disclosed on your HOA application, right? So these are things that you should watch out for. And there is a way to navigate around these things. And again, I'd love to be able to be the one that helps you do so. So while Boca Raton is an excellent place and is super friendly to pets, you also have to practice some discernment because they do discriminate against some breeds, which they call aggressive breeds, and that's very unfortunate as well. Well, there you have it, folks. Top list of pros and cons of living in Boca Raton, Florida. Everything that you need to know. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out my other videos on either side here. And as always, many blessings.